We arrived at First Gresham Baptist Church and were introduced to Pastor Steve Gage. We asked what the fundamental beliefs of Baptists are. Well, that's sort of a big question. There's a lot of things that could go into that. Uh, Baptists are, you know, part of uh, the historic uh, Christian tradition. You know, we believe that, that God is, uh, is a trinity um, and, uh, you know, one God in three persons. Uh, we believe Christ is the Son of God, that He is uh, uh, the sacrifice for our sins and has provided a way of salvation. Um, these things are, you know, generally believed by uh, uh, all Christian churches. Uh, of course, we are part of uh, uh, Baptists. Most Baptists are evangelical, though not all Baptists, but uh, that is, we uh, look back to the Reformation in the uh, 16th century uh, for our roots in Luther, Calvin. And yeah. As to major beliefs, uh, Baptists. Uh, come from a movement that started in the early 1600s in England uh, that uh, emphasized the responsibility of each believer to study the scriptures for themselves, uh, to come to their own convictions. We also asked him how he believes you should apply Baptist beliefs to everyday life. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. And so, you know, we believe uh, that Baptist believers uh, should live life to the full in the world and uh, yet uh, live in submission to the teachings of Christ uh, in the Gospels and the teaching of the Apostles in the New Testament. So it's for us it's not just enough to to stand up and make a profession of faith yeah. it's a life that has to be lived you know also also talk the walk you know you mm -hmm. have to share the good news with with other people and so uh, you know we're part of the evang uh, evangelical movement that believes in spreading the gospel while we did watch full service not everything we saw was ritualistic our first observation of ritual was the passage of the offering is when members give an undisclosed amount of money and place it in a bowl before passing it on to the next person. As a member of the church and of the faith, they have the obligation to help support the church financially. In this way, they are stressing responsibility. We also saw the pastor initiate a ritual by calling on the congregation to greet one another. Would you stand and uh, your neighbor, greet them as the choir comes? Towards the beginning of the service, the pastor calls for the congregation to greet each other. They turn to others sitting around them and shake hands or hug. This bonds them socially and highlights the unity and mutual faith of the church. So, solidarity is enhanced. Another ritual we saw was their use of music. Singing and instrumental pieces are used frequently throughout the service. This repetition of phrases and notes relating to their faith asserts the core values that the church deems important as a whole. This process is called value reiteration. An additional ritual was found within the ritual of singing or playing music.
The congregation is singing in this clip as well, but they are also raising their hands towards the front of the church or to the ceiling. This is their way of showing that they believe in what the song is saying. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. Because of this, we can assume that the raised hands are an indication of reaching for their God, who is stationed above them. This show of different status is called a rite of deference. Submitting themselves before their God was a common ritual we observed. That is the gospel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit, by grace, might impress the truths of the gospel, not my words, but the truths of Scripture, these powerful things that change life. Lord, I pray that that might happen today. I pray, Lord, if there is anyone here outside the fold of grace without salvation in Christ, that they might at this very moment turn toward you and seek after the service spiritual counsel to begin the life of a Christian. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. In this clip, the members of the congregation are collectively bowing their heads in prayer towards the front of the church while the pastor leads. By doing this, they are submitting themselves before their God, and by bowing their heads, they are showing the difference in status between them and Him. This is also called a rite of deference. The most concrete example of ritual that we saw was the Holy Communion. Once a month to participate in something we call the Communion, Holy Communion. Some traditions it's called the Eucharist, which means Thanksgiving. Indeed, we are doing that. We are offering up our Thanksgiving to the Lord for all that He's done. communion is another example of value reiteration. It restates to everyone in the church that Jesus died for their sins and that they should rejoice and be thankful. Also, this is another way that solidarity is enhanced. As a whole, they take part in this communion, which signifies that they are all followers of Christ together. Lastly, there is more demonstration of rites of deference as the pastor and the congregation lift their hands in prayer to once again be humble before their God. The First Gresham Baptist Church used ritual to remain unified, humble themselves before their God, and re-emphasize their beliefs. As one member pointed out to us, the group formed somewhat of a subculture, one of many in the Gresham area.